Hello, Internet people who are interested in obscure constructed languages. Um, so I was looking through some of these to think of adapting them to video in some way. So this one is about Arkansas in April. So I was like, well, you know, I'm not that far from Arkansas. Uh, so maybe next April I can go there and film something for that part. We, we do have Ozarks in Missouri, but uh, I guess it's not the same, I mean, it's the same Ozark area, but it's not, Suzette likes the Arkansas Ozarks, <laughs> so. So, to drive down here would be about four hours. I can do that, I've done that before. I've driven to Wichita, um, and to Omaha and all of that, so I don't know, maybe next April to be true to this story, I can... Uh, go to either the Ozarks or maybe they have a botanical garden and I'd be more likely to find the flowers mentioned in this story, but maybe that's something I'll do. Um, I've also thought about driving to Suzette's birthplace, which I think was Springfield. I'd have to go, I'd have to double check Springfield, Missouri. Uh, but I don't really know what I'd film there as far as like, I don't know much about her life in Missouri. To even go film and say, look, this is the pizza place she used to go to or something. But anyway, so I was looking at that stuff and I've always noticed that these were printed in some magazine called Hotwire. And I was like, well, I wonder if there's any information about this magazine out there on the internet. Could I like find a copy of one at a library or something? So I went ahead and looked it up and actually, you know what? You can download the issues in PDF format, so you don't even have to search that hard. So three of these stories, Lessons 1, 2, and 3, were printed in three contiguous issues of Hotwire. Um, the March 1986, July 1986, and November 1986. Is that a message? Okay, someone put a message on that. Um, and see, you can see there's going to be Ladon in this issue and Lesbian Nuns. Um, so, and there's Laudon and more Sappho, very sapphic, uh, magazine series, I suppose. Um, I'm not really up on what the culture of women and or lesbians was in the 1980s. I, I assume that they, since they have lesbian nuns in Sappho, I assume part of this culturally is around lesbian culture. Um, but anyway, so there's some stuff in here. I haven't gone and looked through all of these. Like, maybe there's going to be a really cool hidden other thing about Laudon in here. Or maybe Suzette's published other works in one of these other ones. Um, because I only know which issues that these other lessons were posted in because they're cited down here. That's why you cite your sources um, so other people can find it later on. Uh, but yeah, so we can just kind of scroll through here. Um, they oh, they have like the same kind of artist what's in here as well. Maybe uh, Suzette was like, hey, where did you get your stock art of naked ladies on witches? And then um, uh, wherever they got that from was listed somewhere in the book itself. I don't know. I've seen it while reading through. Um, but yeah, so we have... This is the first issue, March. Not the first issue of the magazine, but the first one that has it. And we can go down here, and we have Laud On by Suzette Hayden Elgin. We can go down to page 14. Which will be... Oh, did I go too far? Yes. So I haven't looked through these yet. Actually, I want to read this article about electronics and music. Um, but maybe I'll do that later. Women's rock and roll. Let's be reasonable. And... Yeah, okay, so here's some of the lessons. Here's page 14. So I don't know if there is maybe a posting before that issue. That was that one. Where she introduced 
Oh, KC Jazz Fest. I live in Kansas City. Um, introduce the concept, or if it was just like, here's a posting, I made a language, read about it in this magazine, here's the first lesson. Um, but yeah, so uh, sh there's the story about Granny Show Show, Show Show, whatever, and then some words for your dictionary, the linguist translation, um, and then the kind of challenge, here's, okay, here's information about Laudan, language constructed to express the perceptions of women, this column presents translation lessons for those interested in learning to use the language. Suzette Hayden Elgin welcomes correspondence from women as an address. Uh, one time I sent a postcard to the address here at the end. It's a different one. Um, did not get any response. It was also after Suzette had died. <laughs> so I thought maybe her husband checks the box or something, but no, I haven't gotten any responses. Actually, let me look at, I'm just going to go off on a tangent here. Where's Huntsville, Arizona? Or not Arizona, Arkansas. Because depending on where it is in the state, it could be a lot farther away from Kansas City. Yeah, that would be maybe more like, ooh. Uh, maybe, no, it would probably be about four hours. I could drive there. I don't know what there is in Huntsville. Well, we can see. Just, here's a video about, let's go around this random city, town, that I don't know anything about. Um, okay, so it has some of the same notes as what's in here. Uh, as far as to music and all of that. Um, I think this is the translation challenge. And notice that they had to like write the the um, dashes in. Lot on lessons recommended. The first dictionary and grammar, grammar tape. Uh, and, oh, November 1985 issue. <gasps> Another lead article about the development. November 1985. Oops. I will post this also in the um, Lot on Club blog if you want to keep track. So. These don't have them listed by date. I'll go ahead and open that one. Maybe we can find it. Of course, since this looks like it's just a scanned image PDF, we can't do any searches on words. I could run this through OCR software. Um, it's not going to be super useful because OCR software likes to read everything in a line. Um, and these are in little boxes. But let me go ahead and save this. I just love women who keep up with women's music and culture. <laughs> okay. Let's see, where's the... Doot, 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 doot. Everything's slow. Okay, we'll open that again later. I've been having trouble downloading stuff off this website. But we'll check out this November 1985 issue. Um, let's see. Is this different topic here, I guess? Well, no, this has some more about Laudan. To the readers, I've been getting letter after letter from Hotwire readers asking the same question. What can I do to help? I can't answer them all personally right now, as I am finishing the sequel to Native Tongue, although I am working at it. Meanwhile, here's a needs list. Number one, we need somebody to put together an errata list for the grammar and dictionary published by SF3. Fast, before lots of women learn the errors. There are so many typos in the book, and it's not really SF3's fault, they proofread it over and over, but it wasn't like proofreading English. Uh, many of the errors are very obvious to linguists, but they're not obvious to lay readers, and it will be a source of trouble. It's natural for dialects of a language to develop, and for some of them to have differences that result from a clerical or scribal error, but to have this happen at this stage of Laudan doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Uh, number two, we need somebody, maybe lots of somebodies, to do a reverse dictionary, that is Laudan to English. Not because there's so much to read in the language and you need to be able to look it up, but because otherwise the whole whole morphology gets lost. If you look at the word gate, uh, it's just a sequence of sounds that has to be learned. However, it is composed of u, which means open, and rahu, which means not open. The emphatic for sure, hulehul, is the marker for extreme degree or extent. 
re duplicated, reduplicated. Um, Laudon has been carefully designed so that to have a transparent morphology so that words can be figured out from their parts. Perhaps all languages start that way and then it gets lost over the centuries. In the, the learning of a language, this sort of information allows the learner to set up a cross-category scheme in the mind so that learning isn't just arbitrary memorization. If there were a Laudon dic ing to English dictionary, the word for gate would appear in the same section as the word for open, and the relationship between them would be obvious without such a dictionary gets lost, except for the core vocabulary, um, 100 essential root items that I did first. Almost all of the Laudon vocabulary is built up from parts in this way. Uh, it's what linguists call... I, <laughs> it's, I scrolled and now I lost my spot. down here somewhere. Um, I can look at a word and know what it really means, thus I know in what way it is intended to express the perceptions of women about that word and about what it stands for in this world. But if I am run over by a truck tomorrow, that will be all be lost and the words will look just as arbitrary as numerals. I know that dalitham for berry is made up of dal, thing, and tham, circle. Because the berry is round, and because the berry vine makes circles and wreaths naturally as it grows. So, um, and so on. Without the morphology, the pieces and the parts, at least 50% of what constitutes the expression of feminist perceptions is opaque to women using the language. Uh, that's a dreadful waste. There were reasons, woman reasons, for my choices of word shapes. I think that it would be duck soup for a reverse dictionary to be prepared with a computer. But that, I don't know what duck soup means, uh, but that means the time to enter all the morphemes and write the program that sort of and alphabetizes them, uh, that it's awful that I didn't have the equipment when I began uh, to do it and I went along, but I didn't. As the more time goes by, the bigger the task gets. I now have enough new vocabulary to do a large supplement to the dictionary, actually to do another one at the same size as the first, so the job has doubled itself and it's not done yet. I'm going to continue page 59. So this video is just going to be me, me reading magazines, I guess. Um, because this is the first I've looked at these. And I guess it's good to have redundant sources for all this. Um, continued here. Let's see. Uh, is this still about Laudan? Am I at the right spot? This is about cigars and pornography. Oh, this is 58, sorry. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, I want very much to have a Laudon calendar and an engagement calendar with the Laudon months and proper graphics, but I can neither draw nor calligraph, calligraphy, calligraph, and all my attempts at doing this have been unusable. We can make a calendar, that's fucking easy, with all our computers these days. Now I can draw, um, I don't know what I draw, I just draw cartoony stuff. There needs to be note paper and greeting cards, and all of it is beyond me because I have the graphics talent of a toenail. I wish I knew some women artists who'd be interested in such a project and would work with me on it. Ditto for music, where things aren't quite so bad. I do write music, do my own composition and lead sheets, can play instruments and perform, and so on, but would love to see the activity go beyond me. Tell me about it. Women interested in any of these projects, please contact me. Oh, if only I weren't not alive in 1986, huh? Okay. Um, I was born in 1988, so I'm a little past it. And uh, uh, let's see. where This is the second one, we'll, which will have the second um, lesson, page 14 again. Yep. There we go. So this is the... Um, Arkansas in April. So here's the story. Here's the notes. Um, so down here we have notes. Arkansas is it of about Arkansas. Um, to the readers. Okay, so there's another one. So we're just we're just gonna read all of the stuff. Um, I don't need to read a lot of this. I'll go through it again eventually, just because I like to go through all the lot on stuff with a fine tooth comb. But uh, um, let's just read. Let's just read stuff. 
to the readers. Oh wait, is this the same stuff? I can't do unless I have other. Okay, I've been quitting getting. I've been getting quite a lot of mail asking me to put the writer in touch with others working on Laudan. I can't do that unless I have s other person's permission. If you write to me and you're willing to have your name and address given to other people wanting to correspond about Laudan, please tell me. Unless you spe specify that clearly, I will assume that you have prefer you prefer not to have information passed on. If you w would like to be on the Laudan mailing list, no dash, um, send your name, address, clearly printed or typed. I I have also had requests for a newsletter about Laudan or an APA about Laudan. I wish I could do that, but I can't. The newsletter I already publish, plus the um, help I give with a whole plethora of other people's newsletters, leaves me without a time niche for either of those. But I want you to know that anyone who wants to put together something of that kind has my blessing, in the most emphatic of terms, and can count on my help when if it's wanted. I'd be grateful if those of you who write to me in Laudan would enclose a rough English translation. I'm not always certain just exactly what you mean, not because they, you are making mistakes, but because A, my own command of the language is far from perfect, and or B, you are being particularly creative and I can't quite follow. Till next time then. Okay, so that's all for this one. Um, it has the... It has some corrections here. Um, not on a language for women, November 1985, which is the one I'm trying to load now. It's not doing it. Um, about the author. Do, 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 do. Okay. And then this one will have lesson three over here. Women's music and lesbian music, are they synonymous? Um, do, 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 do. There we go. Page 14 again. That makes it pretty easy. Okay, little red hen. Notes. Any extra? Okay, I think these are just all the notes. Um, I think this is just another note. No? Where does this body of text start? Oh, um, one as these lessons go long. Yeah. Okay. One of the things that women do in their language behavior, in all of the languages I know, is a whole lot of body language work. I wanted that to work to be less in Laudan, and the language is therefore constructed to lexicalize body language. That is, to give it a pronounced form instead of leaving it all to be done by tone of voice and gesture and facial expression and so on. That's why you had the set of words that tell whether the sentence coming up is a statement or a question. Um, yeah, I've read some of these in the main book too, like the word for bridge sounds like uh, whatever the word for bridge is. Uh, I will demonstrate here by opening the dictionary. I know butterflies, ah, yeah, I think. No, Allah. Come on. Why is my computer so slow? Oh, do. Oh, do. <laughs> Ni hao. Type of thing. Like, okay, let's see if this one opened up. It doesn't have the thingy. Oh, no. Okay. Where is... Um, okay, this one's on page 20. Can I just type this out, or is it not quite one-to-one? -one? It's not quite one-to-one. -one. We can read some lesbian novels for the fall. Um, whoa, I haven't seen this picture of Suzette before. Usually you just get that, like, one picture of her looking like a nice old lady. <laughs> Yeah, this picture. 
Okay, so let's let's read this, and I think that will be it, and I'll continue uh, writing this blog post about the same. Um, okay, so she's signing a copy. I wish I had a signed copy. My copy just has highlighter pen in it. Um, okay. Lot on, a language for women. The putting together of an artificial language is a strange enterprise. Most people have little interest, even in real languages. Americans in particular are famous for their dedication to the proposition that everybody in the world should speak English so that no American will ever be obliged to learn any other tongue. A limited market exists for artificial computer languages, there being no other kind so far, but there is no market whatsoever for artificial languages for human beings. We don't even have an appropriate word for the process of putting such a language together. To say that you created one smacks of delusions of grandeur. To say that you invented one seems to equate languages with the light bulb and the steam engine, and none of the alternatives are much better. I settle for saying that I constructed a language, but that may be the only, best, uh, only the best choice in a set of bad choices. You can't set a grant to con uh, you can't get a grant to construct an artificial language. You can't get an award for one. You can't sell one or donate it to a museum for a tax deduction. You can't exhibit it as art or craft, and scholars will laugh at you for having ever engaged in, su in such a procedure. Unlike many other things that appear to have no obvious value to society, it is not even a respectable scholarly activity. Telling it like it is. Uh, I knew all this when I set about constructing the artificial language called Laudon on June 28, 1982. I knew the project to be foolishness and, for women with a family to support, an extravagant foolishness. I did it anyway. Perhaps I can manage to explain why. There is a respected hypothesis in feminism that goes like this. Existing human languages are inadequate to express the perceptions of women. If it is true, this hypothesis it has a curious paradox attached. The only mechanism women have for discussing the problem is that the very same set of human languages hypothesized to be inadequate, or sorry, is the uh, very same set of human languages hypothesized to be inadequate for this purpose. It is a fascinating problem. When you try to give talks on the subject, three things always happen. First, people say the hypothesis is false. Second, they tell you that everyone knows there are many women's languages used by primitive tribes. And third, they say, well, if women don't like the languages they've got, why haven't they ever made one up that is adequate to express their perceptions? The first question is easily dealt with. You start by pointing out that not one word exists in English to express what a woman does during the sex act. I am told by some women, usually very young women from either the East or West Coast, that they are perfectly happy with the verbs to fuck and to lay, and so on as names for what they do during the act of love. For me, however, I think for the, and I think for the majority of women, those words have an inescapable semantic feature that might be summarized as plus penis. They just won't do. You suggest that it should be uh, considered how long, uh, how long men would have tolerated a lexical gap of that sort. Often, this is sufficient to silence all objections, with no additional examples being required. If not, there are examples in abundance. The second question is also minor. You explain that all such alleged women's languages on examination have turned out to be no more than a small set of words or parts of words within a language, whose usage is restricted to women. Typically, they are sets of morphemes expressing respect, deference, subordination, and the like. We may find an exception in the form of a true women's language tomorrow, but none has yet been found and thousands of languages have been studied, including many languages from non-technological te non cultures, which linguists do not call primitive. Um, oops. The third question is quite a different matter. Many possible responses come to mind. The sort of thing you say when someone asks why no woman has ever written a great symphony for guitar and tuba, or some such item. You can say that it takes a lot of time, and that women have never had much free time. You can say that it requires very special and extensive training, and that women have not had access to such training. You can say that probably women have constructed languages, but that, like so much of other women's work, all records of them have been lost. 
but these responses have been used so often that they no longer have any impact, and using them will earn you nothing but a row upon row of smug smirks to look at. They will not dent the perception of your listeners that the real reason is that women are not smart enough to carry out the task. I reached a point where I couldn't handle the smirks any longer. I know now that I could have said a woman did construct a language, Hildegard of Bingen did, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, um, it has been lost, but the fact that she constructed it and that it had a vocabulary of more than 900 words is a matter of historical record. But I didn't know about Hildegard of Bingen, not until I read Mary Daly's book Pure Lust in 1984. I kept having to stand there and say, I don't know why, and look at the smirks. It was awful. And it may uh, be that even if I had known about Hildegard and could have given that answer, I would have still felt compelled to, become, to construct a language myself, because I was, at that time, writing a science fiction novel called Native Tongue, in which the women do them make themselves language. I am not expected to know anything about the construction of a spaceship engine, and my readers will forgive me if I don't try. But my doctorate in linguistics mean that if I use a constructed language as part of the plot of the book, I am expected to know something about that, and to write it about it in a useful fa fashion. I could have faked it, of course, just salted in an alleged word of the hypothetical language here and there, but there was that third question that was causing me so much distress, and there was my own Ozark conscience to answer to, and I could see no way to escape from either one. And so I sat down to do it myself, to construct a language intended to express the perceptions of women adequately. The results of my efforts was Laudan. It means the language of those who perceive. I, um, it took me several hours a day for an entire year, and I have not yet begun to repair the financial damage I inflicted on those who depend on me by spending the time on that project. At the end, a miracle happened. The science fiction group in Madison, Wisconsin, called SF3, published my first grammar and dictionary and took on the job of marketing and distributing and advertising it. It is possible that because of their efforts, the language will not be lost, and I am helpless to express how grateful I am to them. There were many ways to go about constructing the language. The task itself, for a trained linguist, is trivial. I could construct three or four languages a week easily, and with a good computer I could turn out one in an afternoon. But I had set my mind to the goal of constructing a language that would satisfy not just the formal requirements, but the empirical ones, the real-world practical ones as well. I knew that would be an enormous task, and I was not mistaken. I could have done it in half the time with a computer, but I didn't have one. I did it by hand. Laudan does three things that seem to me to be crucial for a woman's language. At least for those whose native language is English or one of the languages related to English. First, it has specific words, or lexicalizations, for chunks of reality that matter to women but have not been given names of their own before. It has a word for what a woman does during the sex act. It has a word for the variety of love a woman feels towards a child of her body that she does not like. Second, it has lexicalizations for many sequences of meaning that are handled in English and related languages by body language alone. This lessens the linguistic work that women have to do and is important to me. The third thing Laudan does is requires a bit more explanation. It happens that there is nothing that can be said in any language that cannot be said in every other language. It may be very inconvenient and time consuming, but it can be done. In Navajo, there's a verb I can't pronounce that. So maybe like I I can't make that clicking sound. I'd have to roll my tongue kind of weird. I'd have to like see a diagram of how that works. But kind of an ilk cod, maybe? I don't know. Which means to go out and catch a mother animal and hold it so that someone else can put to its breast a newly born infant animal of the same species that has been abandoned by its own mother because some idiot of a human being handled it with greasy smelling hands before its own mother had nursed it in the hope that the 
more experienced mother animal will adopt and feed it. You can say that in English, I just did, but it's terribly cumbersome. And much of the time, that's the problem with English and the other languages alleged to be inadequate for women. You can say what you want to say, yes, it is possible. But it takes so long and it is terribly awkward that people won't listen to you while you do it. This is one of the reasons that women in our society find themselves paying someone, most of the time a man, $75 an hour and up just to listen to what they want to say. I tried to make that better with Laudan. I tried to construct a language in which it would be convenient and pleasant to talk about the things that matter to women for a change. The obvious question now that has been done is, so what? True, I have an answer to that why haven't women ever challenged, but that's very little to show for a year's hard work. What precisely can I be said to have accomplished? What good is it, and what will happen now? What I have accomplished is the formal demonstration that a woman can do what I have done, because I have access to print media. I also have managed to scatter mentions of this around in such a way that Laudan will be harder to lose than Hildegard of Bingen's language was. In that sense, it makes no difference what good it is. It is a scientific fact, a testing of the hypothesis that such a thing is possible for a woman. It doesn't even matter whether Ladan could be described as a good women's language or not. Formally speaking, it is everything a human language is required by linguistic science to have, and it has a vocabulary and grammar sufficient to allow its use for human communication and it contains mechanisms for expanding it in the same way that any other human language can be expanded. As a scientist, I find this satisfactory. However much, as a woman, I might wish I could be sure that it was not only a good language but a superb one. One thing that it is good for is a kind of diagnostic probe to find patriarchal language with. I've been translating the King James Bible, which is the most patriarchal document that I know of, into Ladan and it has been teaching me many things about what is and what is not patriarchal language that I did not know before. It lets me go beyond the obvious problems of pronouns and so-called generic uses of the word man, and beyond the obvious problems of that long list of titles for the divine being uh, that seem to have been selected from Soldier of Fortune magazine. You do not realize how fiercely patriarchal the 23rd Psalm is until you have tried translating it into a language intended specifically for the expression of women's perceptions. And speaking of that, here's the translation of the 23rd Psalm. And we can also scroll down here to the um, morpheme by morpheme translation. Okay. Um, this seems to me a useful function, and one that may be helpful in uh, the future. I would have had an awful time publishing a scholarly paper on the topic of constructing such a language, but papers on the difficulties of translation into the language and the insight those difficulties provide into women's perceptions will now be much easier to place. And what will happen now? I wish I had good news for you. I wish that I could tell you that with the publication of Native Tongue and the publication of the Grammar and Dictionary, and the publication of Women and Language News of a translation of the Nativity story into Ladan, there had been a great surge of support for the language, at least from women. I wish I could say that women are studying the language and writing in it. I wish I could tell you that up against the G.I. Joe toys and calendars featuring buttocks, there were Ladan toys and Ladan calendars. I wish I could even tell you that it had been possible for me to spend substantial amounts of time working with the language myself, whatever the reaction of the community to that task. I can't tell you any of those things. There are a few small groups working with Ladan in this country, perhaps 20 people all told. I am working away at my translation project, 10 minutes here and 15 minutes there, and I am trying to find women who would be interested in working with me to make available some Ladan products like calendars and notepaper and children's books. But in all honesty, I have to tell you that what is most likely is that Laudan will remain nothing more than a bit of linguistic exotica, the sort of thing that gets a footnote in the occasional linguistics thesis. That as much as has happened as has happened is already astonishing, and can be attributed specifically to the brave efforts of a few people who thought the matter important enough to give a bit of space and time to. I would welcome your help in providing my prediction false. 
If you would like to be involved in a thankless task with all the disadvantages cited at the beginning of this article, you would be welcome. Ladon is not my language. It is a language constructed by one woman for all women who might uh, care to have one, who want to develop it further, who might want to use it as a model to help them construct a better, better one. It was made to be used, and I will be pleased to see it used, but if that does not happen, and I understand with all my heart why it is not likely to, it, it still has fulfilled its purpose. If I had to do it over again, despite all its drawbacks, I would have to do it over again. Whew. Okay, okay, there's actually more in here about Laudan. Um, Linguistics 707, Introduction to Laudan. So, uh, okay, that's just a little bit extra. Um, so I'll probably look through this as well. I meant to save this issue uh, um, in my repository for future reference. And again, I guess that would be the first place to start. I don't know if any of these other issues have any other information about Laudan. Uh, but there you go. There's some stuff from Hotwire and also like a half hour of me reading that I wasn't expecting to do. But that filled the time while I was waiting for my laundry to dry. <laughs> so, um, I hope that was interesting. It was interesting to me. It gives me more to look at. Um, I'm always interested in finding little bits, bits and pieces here about either, like, Suzette's process of making the language, or just anywhere where it's being used, which is not many places, but, you know, uh, I'm documenting it for posterity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for watching and see you later.